we bring you the latest updates from the PNA newsroom. There would be a thorough review of the proposed joint venture between ABS-CBN and TV5. The National Telecommunications Commission explains the outstanding violations of the ABS-CBN that was revealed during the 18th Congress inquiry remains an impediment. In an interview, NTC Commissioner Gamaliel Cordoba said a franchise grantee should not be able to enter into a commercial arrangement with an entity that still has obligations with the national and local government. ABS-CBN Corporation earlier announced its plan to acquire 6.46 million new common shares of the TV5 network, representing 34.99% of its total voting and outstanding capital stock. While Media Quest Holdings, the operator of TV5, will have 64.79% of voting and capital stock and would still have controlling stock of the network. Nakikita ko po na parang para pong kailangan natin tignan is meron po kasi sila mga violations. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So hindi po sila makakuha ng sariling prangkisa. Uh -huh. So ang ginagawa po na is sasakay po sila dito sa prangkisa po ng TV5. Uh -huh. At yung pagsakay po yun? Pero ngayon po ay bitbit -bit po lang kanilang mga ano, mga violations. Yung po kasing prangkisa ay uh, is a privilege given by the, by the government po sa mm -hmm. mga privado na mga entities para po magkaroon ng magnegosyo sa sa atin, ano, sa Pilipinas. At ang gamit po nito ay mga frequencies na airwaves na uh -huh. may ari po ng estado. Mm -hmm. So, ayun po, kailangan po natin siyempre check at uh, busisiin kung uh, tama ba ang paggamit na ng pribilehyo na pinigay ng gobyerno sa kanila, pati po yung frequency sa pinagagamit sa kanila. And the Department of Foreign Affairs has prepared a contingency plan to ensure the safety of overseas Filipino workers in Taiwan. Foreign Affairs Under Secretary for Migrant Workers Affairs Eduardo Jose de Vega said the Manila Economic and Cultural Office is in touch with employers and community leaders to implement this plan if necessary. De Vega, however, hoped that diplomacy and dialogue would prevail. China started its military exercises around Taiwan on August 2 to protest the visit of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. The Chinese People's Liberation Army on Wednesday halted its military drills, but security patrols in Taiwan's strait continues. To date, there are almost 200,000 Filipinos living and working in Taiwan. The Bureau of Jail Management and Penology is supportive of the proposed signal jamming in the prisons. This amid reports of continued drug operations and transactions inside their facilities. Interior Secretary Benor Avalos recommended the use of signal jammers to cut the communication lines of jail drug lords. He also reminded the BJMP to strengthen its efforts in ensuring drug-free facilities. Well, that's a welcome development no, as far as the BJMP is concerned. Importante yan kasi kung uh, yan din yung isa sa mga makatutulong talaga ma para ma-prevent natin yung possible communications no, with the PDL and pa possibly yung kanilang mga contacts sa labas. Napakagandang idea nun and we fully support it. Likewise, Abelos also called for the digitization of all the records of persons deprived of liberty through the single carpeta system. Abelos also urged the BJM to think out of the box in coming up with the solutions to curb congestion. Well, at present, nasa 390% po ang nationwide congestion rate natin. Bumaba na po yan mula sa 612% no, noong 2017. Doon no, sa kabuong datos natin, we have 477 jail facilities sa buong bansa at 334 na lamang po ang congested. Ibig sabihin, 143 ay hindi na po congested. Sa mga programa naman po, para may decongest natin yung ating mga facilities, number one, of course, yung programming ng construction po ng mga facilities natin. Ibig sabihin, kung sino yung pinaka-masikip, sino yung pinaka-congested, yun ang uunahin natin na magawa ng facility. And of course, ma-improve po natin yung mga existing na jail facilities natin. Heads up to our motorists, the number coding scheme will take effect again in the morning from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on weekdays beginning Monday, August 15th. The number 
number coding scheme will be implemented on top of the existing number coding hours from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on weekdays. Before that, a dry run will be implemented from August 15 to 17. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority said the number coding scheme will reduce traffic in Metro Manila by 20% during peak hours. This is also in preparation for the full face-to-face -face classes starting November. That's the latest and the biggest stories from the PNA Newsroom. I am Stephanie Civiliano. Good day.